I think the only the frog is stung by the scorpion because yeah. the scorpion's a scorpion. That's one of the greatest. I can't help it. I'm a fucking scorpion. Fables. But guess what? Guess what? <laughs> occasionally, occasionally, I try to to not be. I try to not pinch people and peach, sting. peach and sting. I try to not <laughs> do that for the benefit of everyone. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that the frog is giving me a ride across the river. Uh-huh. How did you make it across the river when you stab so many? You know, do you, you inject your venom in so many frogs? Because I feel like you're sinking. Right? I wait till we get to the other side. I wait till that's we get not to how the side. story works. There, you do it in the middle of the river. There is a trail of betrayed corpses in your wake, Mike. Oh, there's you like have, a bridge mm-hmm. of dead frogs that he's built. You have ruined lives, mm-hmm. but you know what, it's frog? True. He hasn't hurt the Loveland frog. The Loveland <laughs> frog? No, yeah, because that frog ensorcels scorpions. <laughs> Did you just hit your wall, Mike? What are you doing? He has a mosquito in here, and I'm trying to fucking he's, get it. He's clapping for us. He liked that joke. <laughs> it's the most uncoordinated clapping I've ever seen. It's just the way Mike claps. <laughs> You've you right. heard my records. You know my sense of rhythm. Did you get him? I don't know. Probably not. You never can yeah. tell. You don't know if you got one, and there's another one there. Oh, that's, that's true. Always what I, I always wonder that. Like maybe I've killed, maybe I've never missed a mosquito in my entire life. There's just always have been a hidden mosquito lurking. I hate them. What? <laughs> no, that's, I that's hate a, mosquitoes. Why do you hate mosquitoes? Because they sting me and they pinch me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is it? What do they do, Mike? Just they sting me and they pinch me. <laughs> <laughs> I got all bit up because mm-hmm. I've been still moving stuff out to the to the new country house. Oh yeah, which how's is, that going? Coming along, it's awesome. Oh. It's uh, I don't like so much driving far into town, but other than that, it's a fucking awesome place. It's a compound. Yeah, I got turrets. <laughs> what are you gonna do with that gazebo? The gazebo or the gazelle? <laughs> the gazebo. Because I'm going to eat the gazelle. Yeah, you got to eat it. I'm probably going to keep a lot of my beanie babies out there. Oh, nice. This is going to be the beanie baby gazebo. <laughs> those just keep, those unlike, unlike cryptos, those just keep going up in value. I know. I thought you were auctioning. I did. You know how much I made on that bad boy, on the death beanie baby? How much? Two American dollars in profit. That's good. <laughs> what was what was the uh, initial outlay of cash? Like, what was the? I think I got it for free somehow. Uh, so you got it for free, all profit. Sold it for two dollars. Yeah. How much did it cost to store it for all those years? Did you yeah. ever? Did you calculate the warehousing cost? Thirteen thousand dollars because I gave it. <laughs> I gave it its own hermetically sealed storage room. Right. You found somebody with a walk-in humidor and asked them yeah. to please store your beanie baby as well, and they charged you rent. You know, I think bought it though is uh, Alistair Crowley's kid. Oh, hmm. does he have a kid? He had a couple yeah. kids. He had a lot of kids. A One lot of them, kids. I think, died in uh, from neglect. Yes, but his spectral animated corpse still exists. <laughs> so he had children that he didn't care for. I know it's shocking. I always thought of him as a real with it guy. I know he was a real Full House type, Bob Saget. Mm-hmm. He's dead. Yes. He's dead. He is dead. Yes. Oh, that he was the last one still alive from that show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important weird news from across the globe. With news analyst Kevin Harrison. Actor, comedian, and musician Mike Weeby, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. But now that Elden Ring game, man, I'm I'm pretty addicted to it. It's 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 good stuff. Yeah. I worry about myself. Like I play it and I'll go like, I'm going to quit in an, in a 10 minutes. And then it's like an hour and a half later. And I'm like, okay, time to go to bed. <laughs> and the sun's up and I've got right. a needle in my arm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm buck naked next to two people I've never met before. You can't hear the baby crying anymore from the room next door. 
And like you don't, you don't even, you don't even want to go check because you yeah. don't know what you're gonna find. Yeah, and but you just know bro, you weren't paying attention. For sometimes hours. I just remember like, oh shit, I left it in the car. <laughs> Oof, I got dark. Oh, I got man, home and good. I really, I really wanted to fight the grafted spider creature and Oof. the grafted scion. I think is that what they're called? Yeah, I don't remember. I, but, yeah. yeah. I spend my day thinking about techniques and new mm-hmm. new builds, as they call it. Mm. <laughs> what stats I want to level up, and uh, but you know what? I went out and guess what? 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 My kid was all right. He was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Look cranky. Did you, look, did you leave him out in the gazebo? Yeah. It, well, I mean, in the car seat inside the car, but you know, it's not oh, even yeah. really. I mean, is it? Re- it's 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 still it's still sp- spring. It's, yeah, it's not even and summer. The nights yet. aren't that cool. It was in the evening, so it wasn't even right. You know, and by the time I remembered, the sun was uh, it was up, but it was barely up. You know, so oh, it hadn't yeah. gotten really right, really hot yet. So he's fine. He's fine. And yeah, he's probably covered in mosquitoes, but that is really kind of a good sign because mosquitoes don't go after corpses. So that's when you true. see that, true. That's it's true. like that's a long range notice that hey, everything's okay. Yeah. Because I was rushing to get home, and when I fed him, he got food all over himself. And by food, I mean a slushy from Sonic. <laughs> and so there was other like stuff like stuck to him. And I thought I picked him up. The first thing I thought, you know what the first thing I thought was? Uh, he looks like one of the little grafted spiders, the grafted <laughs> scions. <laughs> so in a, in a way, I think he appreciates well, the we're... dedication that I have to Elden Ring. Right. You're you're cosplaying Elden Ring by neglecting your child. That's the, yep. That's good. That's how they would do it in the Elden Ring universe. It's a very mm-hmm. it would be a hard area to live in. Yes. Not a lot yes, of not a lot of happiness in the lands between. Mm-hmm. They call them. So now that we've now that we've uh, had our nerd corner, maybe it's time to get on it's to the not news. Cool. It's not it's not nerdy if. <laughs> It's a game that's like the most popular game that sold millions of things, millions mm-hmm. of, 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 of copies. Uh-huh. Well, how many nerds are there in the world? Millions. Is, is football nerds? Is football for nerds? Yeah. Some, they're football nerds. They're def- sports nerds you, may be the worst of all nerds. Do you think Matthew McConaughey is a nerd? Let me ask you that. I'm going to have to get back to you on that one. Well, it's, you're into it because he's not, but guess what? Matthew McConaughey fought a dragon in the movie Rain of Fire. <laughs> One of the greatest movies ever made. He's a character's name is Van Zan. <laughs> and he had tattoos and he jumped with yeah. a pickaxe and mm-hmm. fought a dragon. So yeah. he hates dragons. Yeah. He hates them. He hates them. They killed his family. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> if you think that Matthew McConaughey's a nerd, uh-huh. then well, guess what? I'm a fucking nerd. And guess what? And guess what? Nerd means never-ending radical dude. <laughs> I just like that Matthew McConaughey and a uh, oh, what's old Batman's name? Christian Bale. They were together in the best movie either one of them ever made. Yeah, like I it's know, cool right? that something that you know and it just happened. Their chemistry was such a big part of it, and I'm surprised that Hollywood hasn't tried to duplicate that with them. Okay, well, for the listener, I'll tell you this movie. It's about. <laughs> Uh, somebody found a dragon and it let, let a bunch of other dra- the dragons, a bunch of dragons came to life in 1990s or early 2000s and they destroyed the world because they burned everything down. Right. They eat ash. They live on ash. Yeah. They live on ash. So they burn stuff and then they eat the ash and society's gone underground. Christian Bale is kind of with a group of people, but then he teams up with. A fella named Van Zan, That's right? Played by Matthew McConaughey, a ripped, a ripped Matthew McConaughey. And let's just say that it is uh, one hell of a fucking movie, and it also makes you think. It's really the first apocalypse movie <laughs> about a post-apocalyptic right. life. There's that was the first one, and people have done spins on it. Spins. Yeah, they, they tried to do like a take on, oh, what if it was a post apocalypse with zombies or just uh-huh. like disease uh-huh. or whatever. Rip, they're all ripping off Rain of Fire. Right. And then any movie, Game of Thrones is just a giant Rain of Fire ripoff. Oh, yeah. There's, you, can, you, can, 
the cues you can you can see it unfold that it's almost the same movie beat for beat well, game of thrones yeah. isn't a movie it's a long movie <laughs> It's it. right. They couldn't rep. They had to take that many episodes that they had to turn to try to copy what they accomplished in two hours. Yeah. In ring of fire. They had to spread it out over eight yeah. hours to even come close. And they couldn't even do it. Right. There's no other way to pack in something that, that dense. Yeah. They, they, they didn't have, they, they, and they, they knew they couldn't get McConaughey because McConaughey is such a purist. He's like, I will not, I'll not do Van Zandt again. Van Zandt died and he's just, that's how he is. They're not going to like retcon right. him back to life uh-huh. or whatever. And also that, you know, and, and Game of Thrones knew that they couldn't even attempt to do that. So they didn't even put a, ta- they didn't even put, uh, you know, uh, tribal tattoos <laughs> across someone's body like they did on Van Zandt's. Mm-mm. I mean, what a great way to effortless, effortlessly show that somebody is tough, yeah, right? They, like that's, they invented that. Tribal that was tats. that was yeah. tribal tats. Yeah, that was Rain of Fire. Yeah, for wow. that movie. Oh, yeah. for that movie. Yeah, because before it was always like a picture of like a fucking Popeye or a sailor or Taz or something <laughs> like that. But that was the first movie that was like, right. oh, what if we just big black bars in certain areas? Mm-hmm. We'll call it tribal tats. They're also the first yeah. movie to coin the term "sick ink." <laughs> All right, you guys ready to get to the news here? We're going to describe a 20-year-old movie that nobody well, cares I, about. Uh, you are you are missing the mark, sir. You're uh, missing well, the mark. I mean, yeah, if you I guess if you're some like, you know, Marvel. <laughs> this is where things started. Well, that's why we don't get movies like Rain of Fire anymore. It's cuz of uh, Marvel. Yeah, cuz it has to be we have to have the same thing all the time. Maybe it's cuz it lost a bunch of money and uh <laughs> well, art house flicks don't yeah, always exactly. make a lot of money, Kevin. Art house movies, prestige movies like that. Yeah, it's it. It was made because of course it yeah, was. It wasn't just made to be like, oh, fucking, fucking big guy punching another guy, a girl with great big fucking titties halfway showing some, oh, <laughs> CGI. What? Suck my own dick. <laughs> this was like a movie that like had it had action and uh-huh. had adventure, but it also made you think. It had it had Matthew McConaughey, Christian Bale, two of the biggest working actors mm-hmm. around. Do you know what uh, no Marvel movie has explained so far? In all those movies, all those movies, they have never once explained how the dinosaurs became extinct. Mm. And Reign of Fire does. Yep. How how did the dinosaurs become yeah. extinct, Brian? Just think about it. <laughs> Just think about it. It was it was actually a. You know, uh, an asteroid hit the Earth. Uh, okay, you know that. Okay, <laughs> uh, see, okay, right. Kevin just Kevin Kevin just got back from his archaeology science lab. <laughs> mm-hmm. Welcome to the International News Service. We're your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison, along with I am Brian Camp. I'm Mike Van Zan. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that over there? Yeah, and in the. In the in the lower third, not here because he's been burnt to a crisp by a dragon, and then his ashes have been eaten. <laughs> it's Mark Ryan. You won't be spreading those ashes over the ocean. Mm-mm. They've been consumed by a dragon. Yes. I just was wondering if we were reporting that Mark's dead. Is I, that what oh, yeah. we're no, doing? We were, we're reporting we're, that his ashes were eaten by a dragon. Ba 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 ba! Breaking news: Mark Ryan <laughs> was burned to a crisp by a dragon. <laughs> And then the ashes mm-hmm. were eaten. And then Should've. the dragon's head was cut off by Mike Van Zan <laughs> Weeby. <laughs> when he jumped out of a helicopter with only a pickaxe and a flare Damn. in one hand to attract the dragon. Mm-hmm. So our first story comes to us from Science Alert. Mm. Mm, alert we're about to lie to you and steal your money (laughs) just letting you know nothing we say is going to be real numerous anomalies have been spotted on mars including a face-like formation uh something called butt crack rock that well it looks like what you might expect an angel a sasquatch skull and even a squirrel While each of these has been debunked as natural phenomena, in mid-May, NASA's Curiosity rover spotted something new on Mars. A perfectly carved, massive alien doorway. The doorway is 
a sheer rectangular opening carved into a rock hillside, and it looks like an entrance to some sort of secret underground tunnel. Of course, naysayers on the internet, people like Geologist and Brian, were quick to point out that the doorway actually looked like normal erosion, or that several fractures in the rock indicate that the doorway was formed by a Mars quake and not by aliens. A Mars quake? What? Don't call it a Mars we have quake. Earthquakes here, they have Mars quake. What is it? You can have an earthquake on Mars. But the Earth is, if you're on there, you're standing on Earth. No, you're standing on Mars when you're standing there. It's not, we're not connected. No one called it an earthquake because we wanted to make sure people knew it was ha- yeah. happening on Earth. Yeah. That's that's not why it's called an earthquake. It's it's the shifting of, of tectonic plates. Yeah. Uh-huh. If that's what it is, it's an earthquake. I'm I'm putting the rest of the galaxy on Earth. I am too. We, we get so to name So when the, the Venusians come here and they yeah. say, hey... We had to come to Earth because we were we were tr- troubled by Venus quakes. Brian's going to correct them and uh, get our get our right. species eliminated. I will. I'll correct them too. I'll correct them too. They're busy swashbuckling with sorcerers and Carson Napier. <laughs> <laughs> if they if they really want to be like fucking poncy about it, they could go seismic rumblings. Right. But you can't right. you can't call it Mars mm-hmm. quake. That's our thing. We call that we called ours earthquake first. Mm-hmm. You're fucking biting our shit if you're doing that. What if the Martians came here and maybe they went to uh the San Francisco uh-huh. Bay Area, which is seismically active, and they're they're uh you know, they're signing a peace accord with Earth, and then all of a sudden there is what mm-hmm. we would call an earthquake, and they're like, Oh no, it's a Mars quake. How would you guys react then? And slap the fucking taste you- out of their mouths. <laughs> Both of them. Both of their mouths. You, you think they speak English? Well, you know, they got the universal translate. They got Google Translate happening. Well, whatever word they use for that, that's the that's right. the word in their language for it. So it's the right and word. We'll, and we'll make them change it. I have a problem it. with that. I'll make them change it. Right. But it, they'll be Over like, time. I'll put my, I'll sure. put, I will put my hands on both of their throats and tell them, <laughs> listen, you fucking green-eyed, green-skinned... <laughs> Purple dick motherfucker. <laughs> you have two descriptors for a Martian. <laughs> and it's having green skin and a purple dick. That's, <laughs> that's what makes and you green well. eyes. They got green eyes too. Green oh, eyes, green right. skin, Three things. purple right. dick. <laughs> and and you, they they you're on you're on our planet, you speak how we how I tell you to speak. Well, call us in uh if you got a if you got a statement about um whether you think uh, Martians are allowed to speak in a way that pisses me off, <laughs> give us a call here at 919 833 That's not a real number, and uh, we don't have... Uh, yes, it is. That's it, a very... That's a great fake number. Is, <laughs> I was, I'm really impressed, Mike. It is, that was a really good... It is a real number, number and uh, call in, and we'll mm-hmm. we'll maybe go back to back. Tell us what you think. Uh, tell us We're what you're thinking We're not live, here. and we don't um, have... Uh, sound off, listeners. Sound off. Have any open lines? Sound off. We're live. We're doing it <laughs> We're right doing now. It, are we not? Yeah. What are you talking about? This is recorded live. Listen to this. Right. Listen to this. Like, <laughs> if that wasn't live, how could I have done that? That would never would have made it through. That never would have made it through. That would have gotten well, Mark edited out. Only includes vulgarity. You know, half the time we're talking about puppies and angels and stuff, and he cuts all that out. Oh, Mark puts all kinds of echo on that and really <laughs> yeah. really dresses up your your noise. <laughs> if this wasn't live, there's no there's no way that that could happen. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't just sit down nope. and do that by myself in a studio. Yeah, the guys in standards would never let it fly. Mm-hmm. Practices and standards. We just call it standards here. Yeah. We don't practice. We perfect. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So geologists working from Earth also determined that the giant doorway was actually just three feet or one meter high, and the tunnel behind it was probably only a few inches deep. Well, I don't know about that, but who's to say how tall Martians are? True, true. Did you ever think about that? No, I thought about that. Now I'm thinking. Yeah. I mean, they're little. They're green. Got two throats. Right. And then they got giant big purple dicks. (laughs) 
That doesn't mean they're tall. You're yeah, right. The, the purple dicks are about as twice as long as they are. They have to wrap them around their it's waist. Like a belt. Kind of like a belt. I'm picturing Martians now. Yeah. You've painted a, a detailed picture. They don't look they don't look like how Looney Tunes would have you believe. Did Marvin wear a skirt? He did well, he wore a Roman Roman skirt. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. And a Roman and helmet. And then the Roman helmet, yeah. right? Did they why was that? Why was that is that ever explained? I don't know. That's a good question. I wonder why. Yeah. Hmm. So our next story comes to us from Vice. Which one? Uh, women of ill repute. Ooh, yeah. favorite oh. of mine. You know, interesting. We should probably cut that because my girlfriend listens to this podcast. No, <laughs> Kevin just we're said not, he no, loves prostitutes, not. and he said it, and it yep. wasn't a joke. <laughs> and there's this is a news program, so it a, has to be the there's truth. There's a lady with a one piece, a very tight, 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 mm. tight micro a micro mini skirt. I would say micro, micro mm. mini skirt, and she's smoking, <laughs> and she's got a big. The front of her hair is like a big puffy tangle, and she's smoking, and she's got uh, uh, stockings, but they're ripped. <laughs> is her name and, Tina Yeathers? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and she's smoking a cigarette, and she is also chewing gum loudly. Occasionally, you'll hear her look out the window and go, Want a date? <laughs> Isn't that the sound that the Frankenhooker VHS box would make at the video store? That it Wait, is. Because it was a talking VHS box. You'd push the button and it would say, And if you think that Reign of Fire <laughs> is less obscure than Frankenhooker, <laughs> then you, sir, especially the less obscure than the Frankenhooker VHS cassette box that had a talking <laughs> button you could push. And what did it say when you pushed the button. Want a date? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that in my life. I feel like I missed out but on something. But have you heard of Reign of Fire, one of the most influential <laughs> films of the last oh, yeah. 20 It changed my life. Century. Yeah. Changed, like, yeah. If I were to go back through my journals, there would probably be about seven references to Reign of Fire a year. Mm-hmm. So we've discussed the trouble of home ownership on the podcast several times, including a couple who inadvertently Mm -hmm. bought the house where the exorcist occurred and the challenges of selling a house where someone had been murdered. Yeah, and we talked about how I just moved. (laughs) How about that tie-in? Because somebody was murdered in that house. Yeah. Well, yeah. In the gazebo. Yep. I hope I move into a murder house. I I really did ask my realtor when we were looking for this place. I was like, if there's a murder house and you can get me cheaper for it give it to me because i'll act real like i gotta back out i was gonna give you all this money right right now but i gotta back out and then then they would like give it to me for cheaper but that didn't happen sadly there were not enough murders there's no murders in the house they all in the gazebo in the in the in the in the lake out back Mm-hmm. So, uh, two years ago, a couple paid $275,000 for a house located on the beach in Rodanthe, North Carolina. Hmm. Beachfront property for $275,000. I'd say they got that at a steal. And its listing promised amazing mm-hmm. oceanfront views. Unfortunately, a storm in mid-May brought coastal flooding and big waves, which led to the home collapsing into the ocean. Nevertheless, the real estate property website Zillow determined it was not all bad for new, uh, it was not all bad news for the owners. Zillow featured a picture of the wreckage and gave it an estimated value of $381,200. Not a bad return. Well, then, of course, of course, Godzilla's going to do something <laughs> like that. All he does is wreck stuff. <laughs> And now he's got a website walking around, smashing shit, doing laser breath on everything. And he's trying to get out of paying for the damages. Regardless, $381,200 is not a bad return in just two years. And after the house had been destroyed. Yeah, that's solid. Is anybody going to buy it, though? So the National Park Service confirmed that the home was unoccupied at the time of its collapse, and Zillow has since removed the house from its website. 
This might probably Ooh. bought it. Well, no, it's always up there. My house is up there. He probably removed it because he was busy fighting King Kong. <laughs> in the center of the earth. <laughs> Does he go to the center? Is that where yeah, they, they fight? fight on an island. No, they fought on Earth. They fought on the island, but Kong went to the center of the Earth. That's where his home is. Oh, yeah. no. It, it, yeah, it was some sort of thing. That's where Monster Island had some sort of a center of the Earth connection. I do not know. I didn't think King Kong lived on Monster Island. Yeah, he was on a yeah. different island. Well, Godzilla is mobile. You know. Skull Island, right? Skull Island. He was on Skull Island. Skull Island. island. And there was some sort of connection. But Godzilla is the realtor for Monster Island as well. <laughs> so if you want to get a place, you know, there's a lot of big billboards of him. Him, you know, looking like Godzilla doing a thumbs up. <laughs> but the thumbs up, you don't really know if it's because he's going, ah, oh, thumbs up. Or just because he can only, his thumb only goes up. It doesn't, mm. he's not really a bendable digit. Is he wearing sunglasses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 There's, it's like, it's him shooting fire breath and it says the hottest deals in town. <laughs> no, hot, yes. Hot property. Godzilla. How quickly do you think Zillow would sue someone who tried to get into real estate under the name Godzilla? Well, I don't think they would be able to because they would get stomped <laughs> by the competition. You try to, you try oh, to fight they, Zillow. We stomp we the competition. Stomp, yeah, we stomp yeah. the competition. They never, they never really show Godzilla taking a shit in any of those movies. I mean, you know, he's sitting on a volcano somewhere reading the newspaper. Nobody, nobody wants to look at that. Maybe that's what his fire or laser or whatever it is breath is. That's his. Yeah, that's his waste. waste. Yeah. 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 He is nuclear. He's a nuclear powered creature. So our next story <laughs> comes to us from. The Huddersfield <laughs> Daily Examiner in Huddersfield, England. Oh. It's the, the birthplace of James Mason. He was born in Huddersfield. Oh, James Mason, <laughs> born in Huddersfield, I don't England. believe you've ever heard James Mason before. That's a fucking good James Mason. <laughs> <laughs> what is James? What is he in? Like, what do I know James Mason from? Lolita. Yeah, Lolita. 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 He sounds a little bit like Cary Grant. They're both British. But he's more... It's a little bit of a... Our British people sound the same, right? James, Gary Grant British? James Mason. Is it, is it, are his teeth always clenched when he's talking? Lolita. So it was James Lolita. Mason. Lolita. Lolita. Well, so he was in Lolita? Yeah. He's in uh, The Boys from Brazil, where they clone all the Hitlers. Mm. and yeah. I haven't seen it. Not everybody's into that stuff, Kevin. I mean, it's not a pro-Hitler uh, movie. Oh, really? They clone a whole bunch of Hitlers, and it's not a pro-Hitler movie. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a you know <laughs> the originally supposed to be the sequel to Cheaper by the Dozen. <laughs> <laughs> it was all, all the wacky hijinks in Brazil. From the Huddersfield Daily Examiner. Mm. Huddersfield. Uh, Huddersfield. Huddersfield. Isn't that where our town is set? Our town is set uh, in Huddersfield. Like, that's Potter's Field. Uh, a fifty eight year old retired businessman in North Yorkshire, England, named Russell Kellett. Mm. Home, home of the terriers, York, the Yorkshire Terriers. That's okay. where they're from. All right. In the dog business, we call them Yorkies. <laughs> ah, that'll save you a lot of time. It has, and it, and it has. But Yorkshire <laughs> and Yorkie are the same number of syllables. But it doesn't take as long to say it. No, it's it not doesn't take as long to say it. <laughs> yeah. I've got, a, I've got deadlines. <laughs> I've got the Anderson. I got the Anderson presentation. I have to get together. So yeah. Russell Kellett claims he has been abducted by aliens at least 60 times since the age of 16. Huh. He has documented many incidents over the decades in which he was taken away in order to take part in an intergalactic war. I think I've seen this movie. Yeah. What? No, this is, this is, a, this is a guy's story. Was he playing a video game and he was real good at the video game? And they're like, oh shit, you're so good at this video game. Oh yeah. man, you want to go, come get in our rudimentary CGI <laughs> spaceship? <laughs> so, it, Ender's Game came out before the last Starfighter, right? The book, the, the book did, but not the movie, right? Because it's kind of a rip of the book, right? I don't know, I never read it. You never read Ender's Game? I just, I just said that. Literally, just said I'd never read it. I'm trying to confirm that you haven't read a book that I assumed you had read, Kevin. I was yeah. too busy reading Daredevil. Okay. I, all right. Does, let me ask you something about Ender's Game. 
Does it have pages? Yeah, fucking Daredevil, the Ender's Game qu- quadrilogy, the whole run. <laughs> <laughs> does does Ender's Game have ninjas in it, Brian? No, it doesn't. Then I Not... didn't care about it when I was growing up. Okay, wow. Message received. I thought That's right. Yeah. Loud and clear. trying to make a point. You brought the story about the last Starfighter, and I was trying to trying well, to no, comment. This is on this it. is a story from North North Yorkshire, England. Yeah, a guy about a guy who played a video game. He got really good at it, and Mike said like a spaceship came down and got him. Spaceship came down. Oh no, this is better than that. And there was bad acting, and this the the his friend was a corny. And they go to that planet and like Mickey Mouse, like that Mickey Mouse, <laughs> Mickey Mouse. How many more <laughs> obscure movies can we just shove into this? <laughs> this is a good one. This is from <laughs> the Cinephiles. Good. This this yeah. this is a, this episode is for Cinephiles, Cinefans, and Cinefans. Cinebuns. Cinebuns. Oh. So Mr. Kellett said he had been captured by alien creatures that he said looked like Dracula, but, quote, without the sharp teeth. Like Romulans. R- Romulans don't really look like Dracula, though. They do a little bit. They got eyebrows. They got Dracula eyebrows. Mm. Yeah. And they got, don't, they don't have sharp teeth, do they? I, I've no, never seen their teeth. I don't teeth. think so. They got pointy ears, though, like, romp, like uh, Vulcans. Yeah. Don't they? Yeah, I think so. Or is that the difference? Do they look just like Vulcans except they have round ears? I think that Romulans used to be Vulcans and then split up. There was like a schism and they went to Romulus. I think that they look different in all the series, right? Because like like Klingons just look like regular dudes pretty much in the original Star Trek, right? they got big fuzzy eyebrows. Oh, yeah. Everybody watches Star Trek now. It's not like the same as Star Trek nerds, but there used to be like, it'd be, you know, like you'd hear a Star Trek apologist that would really try and like reason out why the, the corny 60s shit didn't match up with the, the movies in the 80s and shit like that. Um, and I, I, I always wondered, what was their reasoning why the, why the whole race of people looks completely different from... The six got you, fucking nerds. Mike Weeby just fucking <laughs> tied you to a fucking railroad track and rolled over you and back over you. <laughs> finally, finally, I have my way. My comeuppance is nigh. What a what a weird target to have yeah. for years. <laughs> I'm gonna show those Trek nerds. I'm gonna get. Em. I didn't know I had it until I was actually speaking it. I get it. I get it. That's why I only watch Babylon Five. <laughs> <laughs> Then he uh, quote for the past thirty years I've been part of their army fighting the opposing race the dragos which are tall and scaly with heads like dragons I've been gone for years and people don't realize as four hours here is four years on one of the planets I've been to dang wow yeah Man. this guy must be really old yeah and he probably gets a lot of pussy he's fifty eight. <laughs> Tons of pussy. Like, like those years he was on another planet. That's still yeah. his body aging. So he okay. must be like 150, right? He, looks, he, he looks... was on other planets learning how to get pussy on other planets. And now <laughs> he now he's got years of pussy getting knowledge when he comes back to Earth. And he's and there's nothing that women like more than a soldier. Mm-hmm. Especially one that knows his way around a pussy. <laughs> He claims he f- he's fought in battles across... I thought the- you were going to say fucked, but go ahead. He claims <laughs> he's fought in battles across the UK, Europe, and South America, and for, quote, territory in space. Whoa. Mr. Kellett also says his first encounter occurred when he was just four, and he saw Damn. a man in a spacesuit in his family's backyard, adding, quote, he was in my garden. I couldn't believe it. I waved and he put his hand up. There was a silver object, which I thought was a dustbin. He walked behind the silver object and the next thing it juddered and went up. I thought, what the heck is this? Okay. <laughs> Good story, Mr. Kellett. <laughs> That's great. I feel like I would concentrate more on the war fighting and the <laughs> right. things that happened recently. The memories that are maybe a hair more fresh than the rather boring <laughs> encounter that you had initially that's kind of less remarkable and 
also, I think probably a lot of kids have said that they saw stuff like that. It's crazy if you like told a lie when you're like four years old, you just like kept doubling down for the rest of your entire life, all based right. off of a lie. And, uh, I like the idea that Mr. Kellett can't watch Rain of Fire without suffering symptoms of PTSD. Yeah. His <laughs> war yep. with, the, with the Dragos. The Dragos. Mm -hmm. Apparently, all this came out to promote the man's latest book, which is entitled, I, and I, I don't understand this title, but this is what it's called, quote, Russell Kellett is E.T. Ryder, which is also uh, the story of his life and his alien encounters. Like Easy Rider? E. Like a play well, on Easy Rider? No, like E.T. Rider. Like he, he rides a bunch of E.T. bitches. He gets a bunch of alien <laughs> pussy. <'cause he's laughs> That's such far a, more likely. Wow. Yeah. This is the first time I got some aliens pussy. I was sitting <laughs> in a space bar. <laughs> <laughs> and I was drinking, and some guy came up to me and he said to me, "Hey, um, my name's Slothar, and I'm a, Slothar. I'm a, I'm an octopus bad shithead. I want you out of my bar." So I punched him, and then a lizard lady came over, but she had big lizard lady titties, and she said, "Hey, you want to go back and uh, tame this beast?" And I said, "Okay," and so I did. <laughs> And oh. I fucked her pussy. <laughs> uh, I want to read this book so bad. <laughs> I did too. It sounds pretty good. It sounds great. Apparently, this isn't the first time Mr. Kellett has made headlines. In 2020, he also revealed that he saw UK pop singer Robbie Williams aboard a spaceship in 1999. That's Robbie Williams-esque behavior. Didn't Robbie Williams kill himself not that long ago? No, he's still alive. And Robbie Williams actually did get a lot of pussy. I'm, I have no doubt about that. But Robbie Williams did not deny the story, but said, quote, no comment. Yeah. I, I think mean, he's just picking up on Mork stuff. So he's saying that Robbie Williams was saw him in space because he saw him on a sitcom. No, that's Robin. That's Robbie, right. Robbie, yeah, that's Robbie. Robbie, Robbie Williams was in a group called Take That. <laughs> no. Wow. No, no, he was in the like he was a stand comedian. He was in that movie it's, RV. He's and, funny, but he's not a yeah, stand up RV. per se. He was the do he, he played like the funny doctor in that movie. Are you thinking of Patch Adams? Yeah, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Robin Williams was in Patch Adams, and he was no, you're, fucking you're, hilarious in that movie. Yeah, <laughs> I, but Robbie Robbie Williams is his British brother. Who's a singer? Are you sure? Yep. Okay. And he okay. was in a group called Take That, but then he just started, I don't know, he started a solo career. Was that his improv troupe called Take That? Sounds like a good... <laughs> it seems like it. He was like, it Robbie Williams was like the Donnie from New Kids on the Block. He was the bad boy of the, of the oh, boy band. The Boomtown member. Yeah. Transformer. <laughs> Such a good Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> so our last story comes to us from the Independent. Mm -hmm. A recent study by scientists at Kyoto University looked at 48 cats that cohabitated with at least two other pets, either in a home or at a cat cafe. Scientists then took each cat into a room where they were isolated. They showed each cat a picture of one of the other cats they lived with and then called the name of either the cat in the picture or a completely unrelated name. According to the researchers, when the name they said did not match the name of the pictured cat, the test cats stared at the photo for a longer period of time, seemingly because the name and the cat didn't match. Mm. So from this data, scientists determined that cats can identify and learn the names of their feline companions. This is the first evidence that domestic cats can connect human utterances and their names through their lived everyday experiences. Nevertheless, the study admitted that not all cats were cooperative. For example, one cat, quote, completed only the first trial before escaping from the room and climbing out of reach. And then, you know what that cat did after that? 
it climbed out of the building and started a fire. Oh, what was the cat? Yeah. <laughs> I remember everyone's name, especially the names of the people that I need to burn their shit down. Bitches. Talk about getting some pussy. <laughs> this pussy's going to get some of its own, if you know what I mean. Just tapping away. <laughs> you know, I, I think that I think that there's this idea that people should get into science because it will help them better the world. But right, obviously. really, it's just a, a great a way to get a fuck off job, right? It's an awesome way to get a fucking goof off job. People got paid to do this. I, I got to go to cat cafe <laughs> today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, put no, but all my lattes are on the expense account for the yeah. cat study. You just hold up a picture of a cat and say mittens over and over again. <laughs> mittens. 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 So do they, do they have a cat cafe mittens. in Austin? Yeah, they, I think there used to be. I, I never yeah, went to yeah. it, but I think there. I think there was. Isn't that like the the cupcake shop of three years ago? Like, yeah, the, the guaranteed yeah. failed business. You just don't yes. know it yet. <laughs> Yeah, it really is. That's crazy. So what is what what will be the next uh cup cat cupcake slash cat cafe? Probably I'll say like I'm gonna say VR cafes where you go in and you you use their equipment and like there's somebody whose job it is to come around with like a Clorox wipe and like clean the headgear yeah. for somebody else to use. And it'll be like a, a thing for a while and then it'll yeah. go away because people either have their own equipment or yeah, I think that the you equip the equipment will become really ubiquitous. Um, yeah, and, and and very light and like you know really like you know it, just like glasses. Yeah, I think it will be like glasses. Essentially, it'll be like the idea. You know, the the difference between um, going to the arcade to play console games and then you know having an Xbox at home that's you know pretty much as good as a console can look at this point. So are you gonna are you gonna get one of those VR glasses things and do augmented reality and make everyone look like they are an alien with two mouths and a big dick? I have something called an imagination, <laughs> Kevin, and I'm doing that right now. Why are you looking at me? Oh, uh, put put your put your hog up, Kevin. <laughs> why I'm looking at you. H- holster that hog. Well, yeah, I got yeah. It my belt loops. Okay, weird. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it started off so strong. What happened? Yeah. I do think, though, that you know, there's a couple hurdles to get through, but um, yeah, I think VR is here to stay, baby. Yeah, and and going to be a new. That's the kind of new frontier that we're at some real Coleco vision at still, but you know, and and very quickly, I think we'll right. be it at. at where we are now and it'll be cool hey what this industry is... do you work in again mike i forget vr <laughs> <laughs> i work in entertainment i do i work in i work you know uh, I, you know i'm a i'm i work in show business i like future casting mike i think that's mm. a service that we can provide one of the yet another yes another ins service <laughs> yes i do too that's me that's one of my roles as a future caster as well as an anchor on the news team and you know, I don't know. I don't know that the NFT is entirely dead. People are predicting it to be dead. It might be dead. I think that there are uses for it. it the technology is not there for. It, but I can't make that funny, so I'm not gonna talk. Well, about we it don't. Much. It doesn't. Ha- I mean, we're telling the truth here. And you know, the, I right. will say that all these celebrities that got their apes stolen. You know, the Seth Green got the apes. Wait, wait what? Seth- Seth Green got his apes, you know, you know, the board yacht apes, like real apes, the most famous NFT are these like apes. Oh, like fake. Okay. Fake. Okay. They're not fake. fake. They're real. They're worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Like primates. Like bubbles, the champ, like an orangutan, like, like they have an orangutan and no, it's, it's an NFT. They stole it. They're non fungible. I didn't think you could keep (laughs) those as pets. I mean, are you sure it wasn't just like seized by animal control? They were stolen by hackers. What are hackers doing stealing apes? <laughs> They're probably trying to sell them on the dark web. 
Oh, uh, okay. For like to torture him or do stuff to him. Ooh, I don't know. Are sick. Can... People are real sick. There are a All lot of sickos out there. And now Seth Green, yeah, there are. star of the Austin Powers movies, has a stolen <laughs> egg. Mike Myers. Yeah. I thought that stuff was unstealable. You just hack into somebody's account and then you can steal it. Same I thought. The, I thought, but I thought they were. Isn't it, it stored was in a digital wallet? The work of a black hat hacker. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. You just you just issued a. I am the authority on this statement. Well, whatever you say, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> there was that movie a while back called Black Hat that was mm-hmm. starred Thor, and Thor was a hacker. He was a black hat hacker. Ugh. And uh, just the idea that a fucking giant buff, most handsome man alive workout bro, like, I know how to code real good. <laughs> right. Let me get into Linux. <laughs> right. I was I was born with every genetic advantage possible. So I'm going to spend my time studying computers real good. Yeah. Let me get into the Cubase. <laughs> No, I had that problem with Bad Times. Uh, what was it? Bad Times at the El Royale. He's supposed to be Charles Manson, basically. Yeah, it's just yeah. Like, it's just like, you don't need to... That movie is... You don't need to kill people to get a bunch of fucking people to worship you. You just take off that shirt, and yeah. it's, it's all good, bro. Yeah, He's like... handsome man. That movie, 80% of it, I loved. And just, his thing just doesn't work. I never saw that. Pretty good. It's worth watching. I, I recommend all right. it. I didn't quite love it, and I really wanted to... And uh, so INS gives it three stars. Yeah, three, three stars. stars. Should, should we start working in a movie review? I mean, we've given a lot this time. I feel like we have steered people in some really good directions. I, I will say after the show, I want to, uh, after we stop recording here, I, I have a proposal that I, I, I pitched to Mike about some new mm. Patreon stuff that I think is going to be fun. Yeah, it was a fucking indecent proposal. So this episode drops on June 1st. Does anybody have anything coming up? Is that the first day of summer? Uh, no, it's June 20th or 21st, depending on... Oh, it. Shit, we're nowhere near summer. It's already... International listeners, it is so hot right now in Texas. It is hot! I, I don't know. I think something's going on, guys. I think, <laughs> I think there's something happening. Well, I'll tell you. Um, on a June Ooh. the 2nd, I've got... The day Excelsior, after this comes out. day after this comes out, I've got Excelsior... It's a comedy show. It's set. And actually, next week, I think I'm uh, Doug Mellard, uh, co host of Excelsior, is going to come be on the program that oh, you're nice. listening to Ooh. right now. Uh, he's he's b- 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 blocked out the time. Then on June 15th, the McEwens are doing the Glow Show. Tell us what the McEwens are. McEwens as a comedy group with me and Avery Moore, nice. who I'd like to get on the podcast where we pretend to be a married fundamentalist pretend. Christian stand up duo. I say pretend because you guys know me. I say pretend because I say because the, the McEwens are Christian when in truth I am a Mormon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's the 15th at the brand new Cap City, knock on wood, that it is open by then because it was supposed to be open a while back and they keep delaying. It. Oh, is it not open yet? No, it's still not open yet. It's just keeps oh, supposed shit. to be open. So in July, I'm going to Dallas to do a show with the Gamblers and Frank Turner and the Bronx at oh, wow. House of Blues in Dallas, Texas. It's in what? July. I can't remember the date. We'll probably talk about it again. Yeah, I have a feeling we'll, a we'll have a show out by, by July. Yeah. Yes. No, I feel like you'll you'll find a way to work it in several times. No, because there's a section. Yeah, because there's a section about where we I get prompted to say right. things that are coming up, and I list I say some of the things. I did some research, and most of those things seemed like they didn't happen. What? It's just you know, I was I, the listeners email me all the time, like, "Hey, I went to that thing and that club burned down four years ago, and Mike That's never showed not up." True, no, that if, if club burned down, it was because Phoenix showed up, <laughs> 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 and he's, he's a cause the tap dancing cat was paid by the mob to start a fire. Is it? Is, does Phoenix wear like? Was it like a? This might, I might be wrong, but I feel like Phoenix wears a, a sparkly uh, leotard or something. It's like yeah, some... like a sparkly like vest, like a sparkly vest okay. with a sparkly bow tie, right. top hat with a little sparkle like sachet around it, yeah, a little cane. <laughs> <laughs> 
So that wraps up another week of the International News Service. Find us across social media at International News Pod. Email us at International News Pod at gmail.com. If your cats are smart enough to know each other's names, then they're smart enough to listen to INS. Check out the INS merch store at Redbubble and our Patreon. We'll see you next week. Goodbye, bitches. (laughs) I gotta go get some pussy. Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS, the news you need.